Howdy folks, I'm Brian and here's some Reddit. Our first story is titled, Am I a jerk for being mad at my husband for spending two grand to rent a yacht for his best friend's welcoming party using the money I save for home renovations? I don't know if I need to read much more than that. <laughs> I'm a 34 year old and I'm a nurse. I've been married to my husband, Dale, for two years. We bought a small house we got for a reasonable price. However, the house is in bad, not miserable shape, and we moved in nine months ago. I have been putting money in our joint account to try and renovate the room by room. I was able to renovate the kitchen since I couldn't wait. It cost about $4,500. I'm currently saving up for the bathroom renovation. It's an utter mess, so... It's an utter mess, and so far, I was able to save up $2,500. His salary isn't much, and he can't help with the renovations, but still takes care of our daily expenses. Hope I made it clear here. Now, to the issue. Dale has a best friend who spent years overseas. They're very close, and since his friend told him he was coming home, Dale has been planning on having a welcoming party for him, along with the other guys in the group. Dale complained about wanting to do something special to welcome his friend home, but not having money to do it. I gave him several ideas, but he still wants to do something big. He asked about the bathroom renovation money and if he could use some of the money. We discussed it and told him that it's urgent to get the bathroom fixed. I told him I don't get to buy things I want, but I'm making sacrifices here, and he said he understood. Yesterday, I was checking the email and discovered that Dale had made reservations and rented a yacht for one day. The cost was about $2,000. The payment was done via our joint accounts and I only got notification hours later. I was shocked. I waited for him to come home and I immediately asked him about the yacht. He said he did rent a yacht to use for his friend's welcoming party. He said he picked the cheapest one. I was livid and kept asking why he didn't tell me and why he thought this was okay. He said that I shouldn't be angry with him since he'll figure out a way to pay me back for everything in four months, meaning he'll pay back $500 four months. We began arguing and I told him to cancel the reservation, but he refused, saying that this is his childhood friend, so he's important to him. I yelled at him and insisted, but he said I was hurting his feelings for not understanding how important it was to have his friendship and how excited he was to welcome his friend home. Said he already invited his friends and will be embarrassed to cancel everything now. The argument got heated. I just packed my stuff, telling him he's unreasonable to spend a month's worth of savings on a party for one day and he should be focusing on the house since we live in it, but kept saying that I'm selfish for insisting he cancels his reservations and told me to be careful because he's feeling like I'm financially abusing him. All right, OP. Unfortunately, this doesn't seem like a very good situation for you. And you two should have, like, you should be working together as a team. And you should have both have solidarity towards working towards this house and the renovations and stuff like that. And it doesn't seem like the renovations are quite as important to your husband as they are for you. And to him, it feels like you're dictating what they do with all their finances. I, I can see that from his perspective there. I don't think he's in the right here. Um, but I can see that maybe from his perspective, he feels like you're telling them, you're making all the financial decisions and basically dictating what you're going to do with this money. Um, the question I have about this scenario is, before I go into that, you're 100% in the right here. I, he took money out of the joint account um, to use for fun. And like, that seems pretty unreasonable. And this was also something that you two sat down and discussed, and he seemed on board with it at the time. And you've also given him other ideas, but he insisted on that this was the idea that he wanted to do and that this was how he wanted to go about it. That's just it. It's like, this seems like a very selfish thing for him to have done. So I do understand your urgency for, towards wanting to get the house refurbished and redone, but I also would suggest potentially setting aside some fun money for yourselves 
that way, if someone has something that they want to spend, you know, a large chunk of money on, you two have separate, like, accounts. This could just be tracked in a spreadsheet or something like that. That way, you both know where you stand for what's a reasonable amount of money that you can spend at any given time. And, you know, just make sure to balance your books so that this money doesn't appear in your savings, essentially, right? You know, make a fake account or actually set aside real accounts so that you two have, you know, checking accounts where you put that money. And then that way, it's going to probably hopefully be a less of a temptation because you two have equitable amounts of money that you can spend. And so you know where you can and can't spend the money. I honestly don't think that you are in the wrong here. I think Dale is being extremely irresponsible and he's accusing you of doing what he's done. He's financially abusing you <laughs> in this situation. You're not financially abusing him. So yeah, it's, it's a really bad situation. I think you two need to sit down with a financial counselor, work out a good budget for things and try to move forward from here. If things are salvageable at all, if this wasn't a big enough, you know, breach of trust for you that you, you know, would like to continue the relationship. Anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk, I'd cancel the yacht. OP, even if you have to take a hit from canceling, part up to $2,000 is better than none of it back. And if you decide not to divorce your childless, self-centered, selfish, spendthrift husband, I strongly recommend you open a banking, checking, and savings account in your name only and hide your passwords. Yeah, that actually might be a really good idea in this case. Like, if he feels at liberty just to go ahead and take money out for whatever reason, even though you two have had a discussion and have decided apparently jointly to not do something... You know, he clearly blew you off in that situation, and yeah. The false accusation of financial abuse is where to draw the line, OP. That's a serious accusation to make, and he's only doing it to make you feel guilty for being angry that he stole thousands of dollars. That's my thought. Financial abuse is not refusing to hire a yacht for your friend's party. This is a huge insult to real abuse victims, and kind of scary that he's reversing the situation and putting that on you. How does he think this is okay? If he was able to save $500 a month to pay you back, he could have been doing that all along to add to the savings. He's just saying that now to have his yacht party in peace. He won't follow through and actually put money in a joint account. He has a pretty sweet deal right now. That, that right there seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, if he knew that this was coming up all along, why didn't he save money aside for it? Or bring this up like months and months ago and be like, hey, um, I want to start saving money aside for this big party. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that brings up a really great point. Why wasn't he planning ahead? All right, I guess we're going to take a break for tea time. Today, I'm drinking the uh, raspberry cream pie again. Now, the thing about the raspberry cream pie from the other day is I said it has a natural sweetness to it. Well, it turns out it isn't a natural sweetness at all. Um, this has uh, green rubios, cane sugar, white chocolate chips, cocoa butter, milk powder, blah, blah, blah. And then a pink sugar mix. So that, that natural sweetness that I was talking about the other day turns out <laughs> not so natural at all. So, um, yeah, I guess that's why you have to be careful when you use some teas and you don't read the um, things here. Because I was noticing today, I was like, oh, I'll have some more of that raspberry uh, tea. And so I made myself some tea and I was looking at the, uh, you know, diffuser and I'm like, what are those things in there? And uh, Amber was like, oh, those are chocolate chip, uh, white chocolate chips. And I'm like, oh, okay. So no natural sweetness here. <laughs> so I guess if you're buying something from David's Tea, you probably should uh, read the ingredients first if you're trying to find something that doesn't have added sugar or something like that. I personally don't object to added sugar. 
you know, as long as I'm aware of it, but I wasn't aware of it at the time, so it's like, wow. So, yeah, that's probably why it tasted so sweet last time. All right, tea time is over. Let's move on. All right, our next letter is titled, Am I a Jerk for Pushing My Girlfriend to Have Ambition? Hello, my girlfriend is a 22-year-old female, and I'm a 23-year-old male. We met in middle school and have been together ever since. My girlfriend was never really the type to have very strong ambitions. She was always an average student with average grades. She wasn't really an achiever. Heck, she would only really work hard if she absolutely had to and there was no other way. She overall a go-with-the-flow type of person. She told me that she has no current interest in college of any kind because she has no idea what she wants to be. And college is for people who already have their life planned out, which is not her. That's not entirely true. I've known lots of people who go to college and have no plans. I'm the complete opposite. I'm currently studying in a big university. I worked my butt off to get to this point, and I'm still working. I'm studying in the medical field. I firmly believe that if you want to get anywhere in life, you have to work for it, and you have to work hard. My girlfriend is currently living with me. She works for her parents with a part-time job in retail. She likes spending most of her time at home, whether it's video games, gardening, or other things she likes to pick up and try. However, I'm worried about my girlfriend's future. I hardly ever see my girlfriend work hard. In fact, she always tries to avoid successful situations unless she has to deal with them. Recently, I have been suggesting to her different college programs in horticulture since she loves gardening. Heck, she loves gardening so much that as soon as it gets warmer, she goes ham, and I see her plant sprouts everywhere. However, immediately tells me that she has no interest which is frustrating because I know how smart she is. She definitely has a talent for gardening, and her plants always look extremely green, and she takes excellent care of them. She always knows what to do, and when she doesn't, she's eager to learn more. I don't understand why she's so lazy about it. She works hard when she wants to. I've been trying to convince her to at least try to go to college and even offer to pay for it, but she keeps getting more and more frustrated with me every time I bring it up. I've been talking with a coworker about it and he called me a jerk for pushing her to do stuff that she doesn't want to do. But I also think it's for her own good because she can get anywhere in life with what she's doing right now. So Reddit, am I the jerk? Edited to add, my girlfriend is extremely supportive of me getting into college and she would always call me and keep me company when it's just me studying. Remind me to go to bed and sometimes, even though she's terrible, try to cook for me when I was too busy. Edit, she came in to talk to me after what I said and I was appalled when she was apologizing because she wasn't good enough and then said I remembered how much she cared for me emotionally when I was almost failing high school because of depression. How did I forget something like that? Reread my post and sounded shallow, like I was better than her and deserved better because of my education. I stopped her and apologized to her of how much of a pushy person I was being to her. And to all, I think we're not compatible. I always thought of her carefree nature as soothing, because my family was extremely ambitious and always pushed me overall extremely strict. Edited ad, my family hated her because she was a bad influence on me. I accept my verdict. Well, OP, I mean, there's not much to say beyond what you've kind of added here. I thought this was an interesting story, and I do want to add a couple of things of note here. You say your girlfriend's extremely smart, and... If she's extremely smart, then you should trust that she's smart enough to know what's best for her. And if she thinks this is what's best for her, then it probably is. Some people just don't deal with stress well, and some people don't really deal with doing conventionally what would be considered successful things. And sometimes the simple things in life are what make us happy and are what bring us, you know, satisfaction. Not necessarily having, like, fancy things or fancy objects and more clothes and more money and all that kind of stuff like money that helps to buy things that can help to bring you happiness but if your needs are simple like growing plants for instance you might not need a lot in the way of 
stuff of money to help you do that. So another thing to consider is maybe your girlfriend has a learning disability or something else like that, or maybe something, and I'm not saying, again, this isn't a diagnosis. I'm just giving examples. Like if she has something like ADHD, where she has really short periods of focus on certain things that really interest her or long periods of interest on certain things that really interest her. And she can't focus really well on, you know, things like studying or that kind of stuff, then it might be really hard for her to basically, you know, perform in an academic environment. And that might be really frustrating for her. So what you see as laziness potentially could actually just be a learning disability or something like ADHD. I, again, I'm not diagnosing her, but just something to consider that there may be something else going on here. At the end of the day, if she's happy with what she's doing, then she's happy and she doesn't need all of these things like the stress and everything to go with, you know, the life to be happy. So she knows what's making her happy. So anyhow, take care and good luck. You're the jerk. She doesn't want to have ambition. She's not trying to go anywhere in life. She's a go with the flow kind of person and seems to be happy with that. If you want an ambitious partner, you need to find one instead of trying to change your girl into somebody she's not. Yeah. Yeah, why does she have to go through a whole college program to maybe monetize her hobby so some guy can think she's working hard enough? Yeah. <laughs> You're the jerk. Just because she's not making money off it doesn't mean she's lazy. It's clear from what you've said that she works very hard at gardening. Things don't become real only when you monetize them. Have you ever considered that your girlfriend is already ambitious, just not in the way you recognize? Maybe her ambitions are to work part-time so she has time for her personal passions, to nurture a hard-growing plant. If you're worried about her future finances as a couple, that's a conversation you should have with her and also with yourself. But you cannot force her to be someone other than who she is, which for the record is totally valid. Yeah. All right, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for being upset that my boyfriend spends Saturday night with the neighbors watching sports instead of with me? So a bit of background. My boyfriend and I have been together for almost five years. He moved to my city a few years ago and doesn't have many friends that aren't my friends. A few months ago, we had two guys move in below us who are similar in age to my boyfriend. He now goes down to hang out with them some Saturday evenings. As we live above them, I can hear them and it's always really rowdy. Once he spent the night there and didn't text me and had done some illicit substances with them a couple of times, which I don't like. When he's there, I can hear them partying and watching sports and I get really mad and upset. He says it isn't fair to spend all of his time with me and my friends. We live together, do things together, and he should be able to have friends of his own, which I totally agree with. So why do I feel so annoyed at the situation? Am I the jerk? All right, OP. I actually don't necessarily agree with Reddit's tag entirely. Um, I think he's entitled to his own friends, and I think what's bothering you is maybe one, you can actually hear them having a good time and maybe you feel left out. Maybe you feel like you're not having a good time while he's out enjoying himself and the actual like hearing about it, you know, below you is what causes you, you know, stress of the situation. Um, also, if you're not a big fan of him using illicit substances, then that might be something that that might be, you know, one of the big things that you have an issue with here. I mean, this is one of the things that you mentioned. So it must be a pretty big topic for you. And this could be something that you didn't really realize your boyfriend would do. And when he did it, it kind of made you feel like maybe these people who he's hanging out with are bad examples or bad influences, so to speak. So certainly I can understand, you know, potentially why that might bother you. I think it's really good that your boyfriend has found a group of people that he clicks with and that he can have fun with, especially, you know, if he felt lonely and whatnot, being here and sharing your friends and whatnot. 
But also, like, if these folks are bad influences on him and you don't like some of the behaviors they exhibit, then um, I can certainly understand that from a point of view. In this case, I'm going to have to say that there probably are no jerks here. I don't think you're being unreasonable, especially if he's not texting you or calling you to tell you that you're, that he's, you know, going to spend the night there. It might make you feel worried, even if you know realistically that he's just a floor below you, he may not realize how much that bothers you. And also, is this keeping you up? Like on some Saturday nights, is it so loud and raucous that you have a hard time falling asleep? That might also be an influence here. But either way, I think this is something you two need to sit down and kind of work out, or you need to kind of sit down and work out your feelings on this, because this is clearly something that's bothering you a lot, or his behavior here is bothering you a lot. So this is a t tricky situation. This is a tough situation. I don't know that there's a clear person who's necessarily in the wrong per se. I, I would either say no one's in the wrong or everyone's in the wrong. And <laughs> that's just kind of it. So yeah, this is a difficult situation. You're the jerk. You live with him. You see him all the time. So what if he spends a few Saturdays with his friends? You get the other six nights a week. The drug use is a different issue that you should talk to him about. Yeah, totally agree. Hanging out with your friends on some Saturday nights is totally fine. However, as an adult in a relationship, you shouldn't be staying over at other people's house without giving notice to your partner, especially if they're literally below you. It's weird. Yeah, that's, that's kind of my thought. Everyone's bad here. Illegal drugs? Yikes. Doesn't let you know if he'll be coming home? Yikes. Your boyfriend is allowed to have a life outside of you. It's normal and healthy, though I'm not sure those folks are the best type of friends to have. His world doesn't have to revolve around you and your friends all the time. Yeah, I think this one kind of encapsulates my feelings pretty well. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a like. Also, if you didn't, consider giving me a dislike. So, uh, yeah, I realized when I was recording the other day that um, usually the camera is mirrored. So I actually flipped it so that it's mirrored now. I don't know if that matters to anyone. You probably didn't even notice until I mentioned it. But yeah, the last few videos, because the new setup that I have, the video wasn't monitoring, mirroring. So, uh, yeah, now when I hold up my left hand, it's actually my left hand. <laughs> oh, at least to your perspective. So, yeah. Anyhow, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all tomorrow.